So we've been down in the weeds here talking about loops and conditionals and all the different little things that they can do. But the fact of the matter is this gives us some tools, the real power to build some cool stuff. And I'm excited to do that inside of this video. We're going to use everything that we've learned in these videos, as well as the things that we learned in previous skills on variables and data types and operators in order to build a fully functioning hangman video game. You remember hangman, right? That's where you guess one letter at a time. And if you get it correct, then you unveil the letter of a word. And if you get it wrong, then we draw a little piece of a body hanging from a, uh, well, hanging from a hangman's noose. I suppose it's a morbid game, but still it's a great way to implement all of the different things that we've been learning so far. And it's a great way to show off how programming really builds up from small pieces. The analogy that we like to use is that of Lego bricks. Lego bricks are little, small, simple things by themselves. They're not all that interesting, but you can combine them in an almost infinite number of different ways to produce really interesting and intricate and complex designs and outcomes. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. We are going to use all the little individual things that we've learned to build a fun little hangman game inside of Python. So first, let's uh, talk about our pseudocode a little bit and how this hangman game is going to work. Now, I've already thought through this and built it out, so I'm going to talk you a little bit through the process that I went through earlier as I was figuring out how to do this exactly. And I thought about it, you know, the first thing that needs to happen is we need to loop through the maximum number of turns around, right? So I was thinking about it, hangman, uh, how many turns or how many wrong guesses can you get? I think it's six, right? Two arms, two legs, a head, and a torso. It doesn't sound like much, but that's what it appears to be. So we need to, at most, loop through our game six times. You get six chances to get it right. Or really, as long as you're getting it right, you continue to get chances. But once you've gotten six wrong answers, well, then we need to break out of the game. Next, as we start our loop, the first thing in each loop we're going to do is get a guess from the player. And once we have that guess from the player, we need to check if it's correct or not. So we need to see if that letter that they guessed is inside of the secret word. Uh, if it doesn't check out, if it's not inside of the secret word, then we need to increase the number of wrong counts that we have, right? We're increasing towards that six. So if wrong, and you already see uh, something that's going to happen here, we've already got a loop. Now we've got an if statement. So if it's wrong, we will increase the count. Um, then I think we'll finish by printing out the correctly guessed letters so that the player can see how many letters they've gotten or what part of the words they've already gotten correct. And then lastly, we'll say if they've gotten them all, then we're going to break out of our loop, right? If we have gotten them all correct and we have not yet hit our count of six or whatever our maximum turn count is going to be, then we're going to break out of our loop and say, hey, you won, you did it correctly, good job, you. All right, so this is the basic outline of how our code is going to work and how our game is going to play. And again, we know how to do all of these things. We know how to do uh, loops and ifs. We know how to do a break. We know how to print and get a guess with input. And we know how to check and compare all of these things using our operators. So let us get going. I'm going to create a new file here. I'll call it hangman.py. And let's see, how are we going to start hangman.py? Well, we're going to start with our secret word. What is the word that the user is trying to guess? Well, how about CBT nuggets? That sounds good to me. Uh, and I'm also going to need a blank variable that holds all of the letters that they have guessed to date so far inside of my game. Obviously, at the beginning, that is going to be blank. We don't need to have anything in there. I'm going to make sure I comment my code here. I think this will be very important. So I'm going to start off by saying, yep, the secret word that the player is trying to guess is going to be stored inside of the secret word variable. The letters that they guessed uh, so far at the beginning of the game is blank, but we are going to increase that as we go. Next, we need to know the number of turns before the player loses. I'm going to make a variable called failure count to store that, and I'm going to set it equal to six, although here's the first place where you can already imagine you might do better inside of your code than mine. You could ask the user how many turns they want to have, or you could ask them if they want to play easy, medium, or hard mode and adjust this turn count to match. I'm just going to set it equal to six to start, try to keep things as straightforward as possible. All right, next we need our loop, and our loop needs to loop until that failure count has been hit. There's a couple of different ways that we can do this, but I think one of the simplest ways that we can do this is every time they guess wrong, we will decrease the failure count by one. So we can simply say while failure count is greater than zero, our game is going to loop, right? As long as failure count has not hit zero, we're good to go. The player can continue playing the game and everything in here can happen, uh, you know, can be the game that we want to be, can be our game. I'm going to add some comments to this as well. Notice that my comments here are indicating what the purpose of each of these things is. I don't need to explain 
how a while loop works inside of my comments, I need to explain what is the purpose of this particular looping structure. And this is going to loop until the player has made too many failed attempts. All right, first things first, what did we say we need to do next? We need to, uh, let's see, what is it here? Oh, we need to get a guess from the player. Yeah, that sounds good. So why don't we use the input command to do that? And we'll store it inside of a variable, we'll call it guess. So here I'm going to ask the player for a letter. Obviously, the player can mess this up here. They can input a number instead of a letter. They could input multiple letters. That would be annoying. We're not going to test for all that right now. I'm going to assume some good nature on the part of my player. So they will input one letter and hit enter. Next, what do I need to do? I need to check if that letter is in the secret word. I'm going to use an operator here that we didn't talk about a lot, but I think you're going to see how it works pretty easily. It's the in operator with a string, with a text. If guess in secret word. What is this asking me? This is asking me if the letter guess is found anywhere inside of this string. It's a really easy way to check if a letter is inside of a string. That's not something that comes up often, but it's certainly something that comes up here and certainly something that is going to help us with our code. So I am happy to use this command right here. If guess is in secret word. So I typed in a letter. If that letter is in the secret word, uh, well, you know what? Then I want to print out some congratulations to the player. Hey, you did this correctly. Nice job, you. So I'm going to say correct. There is one or more letter in the secret word, whatever letter they typed in. Excellent. What if the letter is not in the secret word? Uh, if it's not in the secret word, I need to increase my failure count or decrease rather my failure count by one, right? I, once I get down to zero, I have to quit out. And if I guess wrong, I'm going to say failure count minus equal, minus equal one. So that is going to decrease my failure count by one. Remember this combination operator minus equal is the same as saying failure count equals failure count minus one. So it will subtract one from the value of failure count and assign that new value back to the variable failure count overwriting the existing one. I told you we we're going to use everything we've learned so far here. All right, what else do I want to do? Well, I'd like to print a message indicating that the user, uh, the user was incorrect. I mean, you know, it's not very nice, but they need to know if they did it wrong. So I'll say incorrect. There are no letters, and I can even tell them how many turns they have left using that failure count variable. Perfect. Uh, next, I need to know all of the letters that they've guessed. So I need to add this to the list of letters that have been already guessed. I'm going to use my letters guessed variable up here. Now, most variables don't need to be declared at the top of our code. Uh, so I could have left this off, but the problem is this structure down here will actually get an error if I've left that off. So I need to initialize my letters guessed before I try to use it inside of this operation right here, letters guessed plus guess. If I tried to do this, it would say, I don't know what letters guessed is. That doesn't exist yet. So I started off by being blank at the top of my script so that this command will work here. So all I'm doing is adding the guess that they've typed in to my string letters guessed. So that is going to slowly increase with each loop, with each guess that the user types in. This will increase in the letters guessed uh, count. And I will know all of the letters that the user has tried to guess. All right, now we're going to get to the, actually the complicated part. And the complicated part is I need to decide if the user has won, if they finished or not. So here's where it gets a little bit complicated. And this is a, a pretty advanced implementation of everything that we've talked about. But you should be able to understand what I do as I go through it. So first of all, I'm going to say for letter in secret word. Why am I doing that? This is a for loop that is going to iterate through each letter inside of secret word. The for can also iterate through not just a range and not just a list like I showed you before, but even through a string. This is going to in, uh, iterate through every letter inside of secret word. So it'll do it once for C, then for B, then for T, then for N. I've created a loop here that's going to go through the whole word for me. Why do I want to do that? Well, if the letter it, that I've hit, so first we're going to start with C, right? So I can say if that letter is in letters guessed, guess what? I can print it out, print. And I can even replace the end so that it doesn't have an, uh, an end of statement here. So what is this going to do? So this is going to look and it's going to say, okay, if the person guessed this letter, the first letter is C, if I've already guessed C, then it will print C on the screen. If they have not already guessed C, if I have not guessed that, then I'm going to just print a blank, an underscore here. And same thing, I'll say end equals dash dash. And that prevents me from having each one of these show up on a new line. Now the whole thing is going to show up on its own line. Okay, this is great. This is going to print out the entire word uh, showing dashes for all the letters I have not yet guessed and showing the letter for each of the letter that I have guessed. What else do I need to do? Well, I need to know if the user has succeeded or not. And for that, I need to count 
the number of dashes, or I need to count how many of these I ran into. And I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to say wrong letter count equals zero. So now I've got this variable wrong letter count. And I'm going to increase that by one every time we hit this. Right? So here I'm going to increase it by one. So before I loop through the word, I have wrong letter count equaling zero. After I'm done printing out the word, wrong letter count will uh, be a number equal to the number of wrong letters that printed out to the screen. And what that means is that I can do this. If wrong letter count is still equal to zero after this whole looping structure runs, then guess what? They've got the whole word. They got it correctly. So if wrong letter count still equals zero here, we get to print the secret where it was. I can show it. You won. And I break. And notice the break here is going to apply to this while loop. That's the level that I'm at. I'm at one indentation level in. And that is where the break is going to apply. OK, a few things here I want to, uh, I want to go through because we've done a lot. Let's break up our code and talk about the different parts of it. First, we check the user's guess up here. So inside the loop, with each iteration, the first thing we do is gather a letter from the player, put it inside of guess, and then we check to see if that is inside of the secret word. If it is, we print out a congratulations to the user that they guessed one letter correctly. And if it's not, we increase our failure count by one, and we print out a sorry letter to the person. They guessed incorrectly. Then the second thing we do here is we add this guess to our letters guessed. So we have a whole collection of letters that have been guessed. And we establish this variable wrong letter count equaling zero. Now we need to know how many letters the user has not yet guessed. And we do that in combination here where we print it off. So I print off for every letter inside a secret word. If that letter is inside of letters guessed, then I'm going to print it out. I'm going to show it on screen. And if it's not, I'm going to print a little underscore and increase my wrong letter count by one. Finally, that wrong letter count, it equaled zero up here. And then we did this whole looping structure. If it still equals zero at the bottom, that means the user has gotten every letter in the word. Congratulations, they've won and I can break out of the loop. So we are almost done here. We have one more thing to do. And that is to say, what happens if failure count gets all the way down to zero? What happens if the user does not ever hit this particular breakpoint? And what do we do? We use the else statement inside of a loop. You can see this is going to apply to while failure count is greater than zero. So if failure count gets to zero, the while trigger happens, then this code will run and we'll say something simple like, sorry, you didn't win, but try again. We can be polite to our users, right? So hopefully when you look at this, you understand a few different things, the value of loops and conditionals and the break statement. Hopefully you understand the value of the indentation. It's obviously important for the syntax. Things have to be indented correctly for the interpreter to understand it, but also for our legibility, for our ability to understand how things work. The indentation is really, really important, right? When I'm down here and I'm like, oh man, where does this if and then break apply to? Well, the indentation is what shows me that it applies to this while. It doesn't apply to this for loop. This for loop's already done. This for loop's at the same level as this if statement. So the break must apply to that while loop. The indentation helps us understand where these blocks of code are. It gives us a visual clue, a visual indicator of where these blocks of code are. I am going to open this code up here, or rather open up my command line and try out my game. Python hangman, Let's see if I got everything typed in right or I had any typos. Enter a letter. Uh, I will start with a capital C. Yep, correct. There is one or more C in the secret word and you can see that it printed out the C right here at the beginning of my word, and then the rest of them were blank. You remember why it did that, right? It did that because when we printed out the word, if letter was in letters guessed, my letters guessed right now only equals C. So it went to the first letter in secret word, which is the letter C. It was in fact inside of my letters guessed, and so it printed it out. Otherwise, it just printed out the underscores for the rest of them. So we can keep playing here. If I hit in G, there's two G's. Same thing, right? Correct. Then well, there's two G's. What if I hit in Q? Well, there's no Q's. That was incorrect. You can see six got reduced to five. Now there's only five turns left. And we could go through if we, it looks like it's case sensitive. So CBT, N, U, E, T, S. There it is, CBT Nuggets. Congratulations, the CB, secret word was, whoop. The secret word was CBT nuggets, I won. So I got all the way down here. Eventually my wrong letter count was zero because it never printed out any underscores and I won the game. And we can see this work the other way as well. If I run it again, 
and I get it incorrect until we get all the way down to zero, sorry, you didn't win it this time, try again. I think the only thing I would adjust here is after I print out my word, there's no new line, right? Because I have end at each of those. So I probably would just follow this with a print blank line statement. That will just print a new blank line for me after it writes the word. And I think it'll look a little cleaner. Yeah, look at that. See, now we can see. Oh, see, yep, there it is. G, T. And I ran out. Oops, typed in too many L's. So there you have it. That is the hangman game using everything that we've learned so far about the Python programming language. We used variables and data types and the assignment operator. We used loops and conditionals. And we made all of this possible by plugging these things in together that we've learned. Now, obviously, this is a somewhat advanced concept or an advanced topic. If you are brand new to programming, you likely could not have sat down and pumped out this code exactly the way I did. But that's why I wanted to walk through it with you. By seeing me go through this process, by seeing me walk through the process, hopefully you get a good understanding for what the breakdown process is like for actually writing a program, actually writing code and figuring out how to do some different things, some more complex things with these small little Lego blocks of programming techniques that we have learned so far. This is all available on our website, at the cbtnuggets.com website in the supplemental files download. So you certainly don't need to have copied this exactly as you saw it on screen. I would recommend that you try to. But if you want to download my version of this code, it's available for you to download up there. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.